the studio might want me to play her again. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then I'd like it to kind of be on my terms. Can you picture anyone other than Margot Robbie playing Harley Quinn? Or anyone other than Kristen Stewart as Bella? It's common for stars to turn down roles, and most of the time, it was for the best. From Emma Roberts to Jennifer Lawrence and even Beyonce, these actors' and actresses' careers may have gone differently if they hadn't turned down these major roles. We made one episode, and then um, we were not picked up to series. Before taking on the role of young heroine Katniss Everdeen, Jennifer Lawrence was almost cast as another popular YA character, Bella Swan. Lawrence revealed that she auditioned for the part of the loveless teen, but that the role eventually went to Kristen Stewart. Despite losing the part, Lawrence claims that there's no hard feelings, especially since she would soon star in her own YA franchise with The Hunger Games. These movies have been my life for so long. Makes you wonder if Lawrence ended up as Bella. Would that mean Stewart could have played Katniss? Can't seem to make my way forth past this whole Twilight thing, you know? You'd be hard-pressed to picture anyone other than Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling as the leads in the Oscar-winning musical La La Land. Believe it or not, another famous Emma almost took on the role of Mia, Emma Watson. Miles Teller was lined up to star as Sebastian, which would have reteamed him with his Whiplash director, Damien Chazelle. Watson eventually had to leave the role because of scheduling conflicts with Disney's live-action Beauty and the Beast. I had to be where I had to be, so, you know, scheduling conflict-wise, it just it didn't work out. While Teller left because of issues regarding his contract. In the end, it was for the best, as Stone would go on to win an Oscar for Best Actress for the role, while Gosling scored a nomination for Best Actor. He put us together and I was like, oh, I got this. <laughs> Zendaya was at one point set to star in the controversial Lifetime movie Aaliyah, the princess of R&B playing the late singer. The then rising star eventually left the project due to backlash the film received, as well as the fact that she didn't feel that the production value was there. She was later replaced by Alexandra Shipp. Zendaya definitely made the right choice with this one. The reason why I chose not to do the Elliot movie had nothing to do with the haters. Scarlett Johansson has played the Russian assassin turned Avenger for the last 10 years, but initially, another A-list actress was going to take the role. Emily Blunt almost took on the role of Natasha Romanoff in Iron Man 2, but she eventually had to turn down the role because of scheduling conflicts with the big-budget Jack Black comedy Gulliver's Travels. What a shame. I just would have to be a great part. I mean, it's not necessarily that I'm desperate to be in a Marvel movie or desperate to be in a different movie. It's Before Kristen Wiig took on the mantle of the feline supervillain Cheetah in the superhero sequel, Oscar winner Emma Stone was the studio's first choice to don the claws. Stone eventually passed on the role, which led to director Patty Jenkins ultimately going to personally select the SNL alumnus Wig for the villainous role. Oh, I never get to do stuff like this. It's <laughs> so fun, yeah. Beyoncé had been attached to the Bradley Cooper-directed A Star Is Born remake for quite some time, even being in consideration when Clint Eastwood was set to direct, before turning the role down. When it was announced Bradley Cooper would be making his directorial debut with the film, Beyoncé, once again, was attached to the role. I know that it is the biggest opportunity of my life, and I will work as hard as I can. The world-famous superstar would then, once again, decline the role due to her increasingly busy concert schedule. Lady Gaga would eventually be cast in the role to much acclaim and even was nominated for Best Actress at the Oscars. It's extremely humbling and I'm just grateful to have been a part of this experience. Netflix's star-studded musical The Prom almost featured the ever-popular musician Ariana Grande. Grande would have played the role of Alyssa, a closeted high schooler who serves as a love interest to Joellen Pelman's Emma. Grande quickly parted ways with the Ryan Murphy-directed film due to the fact that filming was set to begin when she was planning to go on tour. She was eventually replaced by rising Broadway star Ariana DeBose. It's a glorious moment for our community. It's great. Audiences around the world have fallen in love with Margot Robbie's portrayal of DC's Maid of Mischief. Harley Quinn. Before Robbie was offered the role, the team behind Suicide Squad had actually went to American Horror Story star Emma Roberts, offering her the highly coveted role. Roberts ended up passing on the project to star in the short-lived horror comedy series Scream Queens, reteaming with her American Horror Story colleagues. I don't fight fair. Kevin Hart is one of the biggest comedy stars in the world, and audiences flock to theaters whenever he has a new comedy. 
So it's no wonder that Disney had initially approached him to take on the role of the genie in their live-action remake of Aladdin. The role eventually went to another A-lister, the Fresh Prince himself, Will Smith. Uh, I completely know what's gonna happen, but I still thought, like, this is gonna be something cool. Amanda Stenberg got their start in stardom, appearing as Rue in The Hunger Games. But they almost joined the cast of an even bigger blockbuster later in their career, Black Panther. Stenberg was auditioning for the role of T'Challa's genius sister, Shuri, though they eventually dropped out of the process, claiming that they felt they weren't a natural fit and that the role should go to a darker-skinned actress, which led to Letitia Wright being cast. Just felt like it, it wasn't an appropriate place for me to apply myself. Zac Efron is no stranger to musicals from High School Musical to Hairspray, and most recently, The Greatest Showman. The heartthrob has proven he's got the vocals and the moves. In fact, he was initially up for the lead role of Ren in the 2011 remake of Footloose. Efron eventually left the project and was replaced by Gossip Girl star Chase Crawford, who also left the project. Ultimately, the role went to professional dancer Kenny Wormald in his first lead role. Efron claims that the reason he left the musical remake was because he wanted to veer away from the kinds of roles that he had done in the past and challenge himself with new roles. And I don't mind that at all. I love. I'm only going to do different things. Saoirse Ronan has quite the filmography, despite her young age, appearing in numerous Oscar-nominated films, from the likes of Lady Bird, Brooklyn, and the Grand Budapest Hotel. She almost had added being an Avenger to her resume, as Marvel Studios and director Joss Whedon were initially very interested in casting Ronan as Wanda Maximoff in Avenger Age of Ultron. Ronan eventually turned down the role to star in Brooklyn, while Elizabeth Olsen was cast. Though one has to wonder how WandaVision would have looked with Ronan in the lead. Before Shailene Woodley took on the lead role of Hazel Grace Lancaster in the tragic teen romance The Fault in Our Stars, another popular young actress almost took on the role. Haley Steinfeld was also up for the role of the cancer-stricken teen, but the role eventually went to Woodley. I always say this, but nothing's guaranteed, and it's also fleeting, so just appreciate every single moment. Tom Hardy was initially set to play the beloved rock and roll artist Elton John in the musical biopic Rocket Man. Hardy was eventually replaced by Kingsman star Taron Egerton, as Hardy was viewed as too old to play the musician. On top of that, Hardy would have only lip synced the film's soundtrack versus Egerton, who provided his own vocals. Kind of trying to absorb as much Elton John as I can. Before Bill Skarsgård donned the clown makeup and spooked audiences as Pennywise, another young actor was initially attached to the role. Will Poulter was initially cast as the evil clown, even winning the role over older veteran performers like Mark Rylance, Hugo Weaving, and Ben Mendelsohn. Poulter eventually left the project once Fukunaga departed the director's chair and was replaced by Andy Muschietti, as the new director wanted a fresh slate to work off of. While it's definitely fun to think about how these different films would have been with these stars in the roles, in most cases, things worked out in the end for both stars. Is there an actor or actress you would have liked to see in one of these roles?